complete geologic processes. The two types of geologic processes and those are the exogenic and the endogenic. But today, we are going to talk about only with exogenic processes. So when we say exogenic, it originates on or above the surface of the earth while endogenic is originating within the earth. So in exogenic processes, it includes geological phenomena and processes that originate externally to the earth's surface. So they are genetically related to the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. So the degradation processes involved in exogenic processes are the following. So we have the weathering, mass wasting, erosion, and transportation. So the relationship of all exogenic processes. So weathering, mass wasting, erosion, and deposition are the main exogenic processes. So all the exogenic processes are covered under a general term Denudation, which means strip of or uncover, or together, these processes are responsible for denudation of Earth's surface. So rocks, when exposed to environment, tend to break down, and it is said that the rocks experience weathering. So weathering is the process that breaks down rocks and other substances on the Earth's surface. So there are two important weathering process classification or the types of weathering and those are the physical and chemical weathering. So let's start with the physical weathering. So physical is also called as mechanical weathering. So it is a type of weathering in which rocks are physically broken into smaller pieces. A physical change includes change in size and shape. So it is a term used in science that refers to the geological process of rocks breaking apart without changing their chemical composition. There are different types of physical or mechanical weathering and those are pressure, temperature, frost weathering, abrasion, organic weathering or organic activity, human activities, and burrowing animals. So let's start with the pressure. So just like heat, it increases with depth. So this pressure can actually squeeze the spaces out of the minerals within the rocks. So this makes the rocks denser. So next is temperature. So how does it affect rocks? So when rocks are heated, it expands and when it gets cold, the rock contracts. So if a rock is heated and cooled many times, rocks form and pieces of rocks fall away. So this type of physical weathering happens a lot in deserts because it is very hot during the day but very cold at night. Next is the frost weathering. So frost weathering is a collective term for several mechanical weathering process induced by stresses created by freezing of water into ice. So the term serves as an umbrella term for a variety of processes such as frost shattering, frost wedging, cryofracturing, and freezing. So we also have the abrasion. So it is the breaking down and wearing away of rock material by the mechanical action of other rocks. It is a process of friction caused by scuffing, scratching, wearing down, and rubbing away of materials. So what causes abrasion of rocks? So there are different causes of abrasion of rocks. 
and some of which are gravity. As a rock tumbles down a mountainside or a cliff, moving water causes abrasion as particles in the water collide and bump against each other. Strong winds carrying pieces of sand can sand flood surfaces. Ice glaciers carry many bits and pieces of rocks. Another type of physical weathering is the organic weathering or the organic activity. So happens when plants break up rocks with their growing roots or plant acids help dissolve rock. So once the rock has been weakened and broken up by weathering, it is ready for erosion. Next is human activities. So weathering is a natural process, but human activities can speed it up. So for example, burning of fossil fuels, which generates sulfurous and nitrogenous compounds, and this chemical upon entering water and air converts to sulfuric acid and nitric acid. So both which cause weathering of rocks. Another is mountain biking, 4x4 trucks, motocross or dune buggy activities tend to be very hard on the environment as they rip up the surface vegetation and expose it to faster rates of weathering. And last is burrowing animals or it is an example of biological weathering which is caused by animals. Rabbits and other burrowing animals can burrow into a crack in a rock, making it bigger and splitting the rock. So these animals dig holes that expose new rocks to the effects of weatherings. So the holes allow water and other weathering agents to reach the rock layer that had been covered by the soil. The second type of weathering is the chemical weathering. So chemical change caused by a chemical reaction. So one substance change into another. So chemical weathering is when chemicals in rain and moving water react with the rocks and minerals to change or weaken them in some way. So it always causes some type of chemical reaction within the rock or minerals itself. So chemical processes need water occurring more rapidly at higher temperatures. So they are more common in warm and wet chemicals. So the agents of chemical weathering include water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. So oxygen. So when water and oxygen Mixed with iron, it creates rust. So this is called oxidation. So water plus oxygen plus iron is equal to rust. Next is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide dissolves in rain water and produces carbonic acid. So this carbonic acid easily weathers marble and limestone so that is the formation of the stalactite and the stalagmite and another geologic process is the erosion so erosion in earth science it is the action of surface processes that removes soil rock or dissolved material from one location on the earth's grass and then transport it to another location. So erosion is the movement of rock and particles by wind, water, ice, or gravity. So under erosion, we have the geomorphic agents. So let's start with the flowing water. So it is called as fluvial morphology or fluvial landforms are those generated by running water mainly a river so the term fluvial derives from the latin word fluvius 
that means river. Another agent is wind and that is called aeolian landscape or landforms. So these are features produced by either the erosive or constructive action of the wind. So these features may be built up from sand or snow or eroded into rock, snow, or ice. Next is tides and waves or what we call the coastal morphology or coastal landforms. So coastal processes of erosion includes hydraulic action, attrition, corrosion, and solution. So landforms created by erosion. And for our last agent is the ice or moving ice and that is called glacial morphology or glacial landforms. So these are landforms created by the action of glaciers. So most of today's glacial landforms were created by the movement of large ice sheets.